the new Game of Thrones series came out called House of the Dragon, or Hot D, as the internet has been calling it. (laughs) (laughs) Which is really funny, and that alone made me be like, I don't think I can make reviews for this because that was was just too funny for me. (laughs) But, uh, and it does feel like I'm getting back into a toxic relationship with a girlfriend. <laughs> You're liking it. I mean, I'm liking it. it. It's, 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 um, you know, the game, the original game of Thrones series, there's a lot to like about it. The first four seasons are really good. And then after that, it felt like the showrunners did everything they wanted. They wanted to do the red wedding and they wanted to do that fight scene with Pedro Pascal versus the mountain, you know? Yeah. That was those are the two scenes they wanted to do, and then after that they kind of just and there, certainly there's stuff to like about the last four seasons, but the quality just dips, and and it, it feels like it's more of an obligation. And was this wasn't wasn't there going to be some other prequel show that got canceled? Yes, there was. There was a prequel called uh, The Long Night, and I think the not, I think it was Naomi Watts was in it. Oh, oh yeah. And, and did they shoot it? They shot a pilot and they scrapped it. And then so like we were all, like everybody was down. I was down. Like I'm cynical about this whole endeavor. But the trailer came out and the trailer was pretty interesting. I was like, oh, it's like looks expensive. Like if you between the trailer for House of the Dragon, Hot D, and mm-hmm. uh, the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Uh, House of the Dragon looked way more appealing to me. It just the, yeah. well, it I'll looked, give you that. And I'm not it, a Game of Thrones fan, and I am a Lord of the Rings fan. Yeah, it just like it seemed like it was more focused on story. It seemed like it was. It looked like even though it's cheap, quote unquote cheaper than uh, Rings of Power, it looked like they were using their money more wisely um, it, with set design and such. Um, so it comes out. And yeah, it's great. I, I I'm really uh really happy with it. I think it has very strong characters. I think it's it maybe is a little more like leans into the world building aspect of Game of Thrones. Which is probably its strongest. It's aspect. yeah, it's yeah, strongest aspect where you have um, really compelling characters, relationships, history of the houses. You know, they, they have the, all the houses, House Targaryen, House Stark, everything. And you, so it really builds into that universe. Um, it has a really compelling, like, main uh, relationship with the king, who's played by uh, Petty Constantine, and uh, his brother, who's uh, played by Matt Smith. And that relation matt smith is just his character the way it's written is very compelling he's very much like a like a a rogue sort of character a lovable a lovable a lovable rogue and so it's a very um and he i think matt smith knows that this is like the (laughs) the role of a lifetime and so he really brings it um, I don't know if you've seen him in... Um, he was supposed to be um, Emperor Palpatine in, really? in Rise, Rise of Skywalker. What? He was. They shot him as a clone of uh, Emperor Palpatine. And they what? cut it. Yes. I don't yes. get it. How, do I don't you, get how it. are you a clone that's not the actual guy? I, I, I don't either. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's ever been released, but he, there was ver- various versions... That they shot, they they shot a bunch of stuff for Rise of Skywalker, and then they pieced together a movie. They didn't know what movie they were making. Exactly. So they were they shot a bunch of different versions, a different bunch of different takes, and Matt Smith was supposed to be Emperor Palpatine, and oh, uh, at one point in time, and a clone of him at least. Anyway, he's really good. He's good in the Crown. He plays Queen Elizabeth's husband. Was his name Prince Whatever? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Captain, what's his face? <laughs> Prince, whatever. I'm bad with names. Um, even real life names, because he's a real yeah. life person. He plays a real life person. He's great in that. But the, the, he knows that 
Damon Targaryen is a, a role of a lifetime and he like brings everything to it. And I think just like everything, the 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 writing, I feel like everyone takes it really seriously. I think the um they take this the history of it seriously, they take the you know, the the world seriously. Um you know, what do you, they, what do you they, suppose? It's, is it supposed to bring us up to the point that we find House Targaryen in Game of no, Thrones? Um, not really. It's it, it's like a hundred and like seventy two years before. So barring Game of any hu- barring any huge time jumps or something, yeah. it, it's it's basically its own story yeah. and set set in like the general world of Game of Thrones. So it's its own thing, but you, you know, if you know a little bit about the history of Westeros, you'll get more out of it, but it's its own story. And it's and so Paddy Constantine is a as a as a king. Basically all of his heirs die and he only has a female heir that he names like like this is going to be my heir even though like traditionally it's been males. And so that uh, adds some drama because um, barring her, it would go to Matt Smith's character Mm -hmm. and Matt Smith is, is he loves his brother, but he's also a huge dick. (laughs) So it's, it's a, it's a great relationship where you have two brothers who love each other, but one would really like to be, you know, the next king, barring this female heir. So there's there's just like really good palace intrigue. Um, the what, they what it's all about, really. It's supposed to be what it's all about. Yeah, and then really good like staging, uh, cinematography, sound design. The sound design's amazing. Like they have a um, they have like a attorney with jousting, and it's a it's a feast of the senses. Mm-hmm. Like every little sound, it's the same guy who did the bat. Remember the episode Battle of the Bastards? Yeah, he he direct uh, Miguel Sp- Sp- was this Sp- Sp- I don't know his name Miguel something. <laughs> good, I'm good with names. Um, he's, the, and it, but it's different. It's different showrunners, right? Yeah, because. Damon and, or is it, um, the two guys who did before, yeah, uh, D.B. Weiss, D, 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 D and D, um, <laughs> they, they were trying to rush it because they wanted to do the next Star Wars and then they got fired because Game of Thrones was so horrible and it's so horrible. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's new guys and they seem like they're really passionate and they really are trying to make a good story first. And they're also very, um, they're very true to the source material, but not, um, not overly so. When they make changes, it's always to make the story better. While when the previous guys, when they made story changes, it was always like arbitrary. It felt arbitrary. And so that's what makes it, it feel more authentic, even though it might diverge a little bit from the source material. It's just, it's always to make the story stronger. Yep. Like there's like two characters who, um, who are different ages in the source material, but they bring their ages closer to make their relationship like they're, they grew up together. And so like when something happens later in the story, um, it's just like, it's a better, it's a bigger impact because it feels like they're really their peers. I wonder if it's helpful that they started a new show that didn't, um, didn't have, like wasn't following the books and then had to disengage from the books midway through the series. Like it's good to just be like, okay, it's not based on books. We're doing our own thing. Yeah. Well, this is based on source material, but they have all the source material. So that's the difference. Oh, okay. So, okay. so they didn't have, they won't have to make stuff up. It'll probably be like, I guess it'll be like three seasons and they'll be able to wrap it up. These, at least these first two episodes, it feels like they, they think that they know that their audience is smart enough to follow along. So, um, which I think is really great where they don't need, don't think they need to dumb things down and they, that you can grasp these, some of these complicated relationships and uh, I think it's better. It's better for it where you don't think like, oh, we need to like put a like a bunch of fart jokes or something, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. like we don't need to like dumb down the, the dialogue to less Shakespearean or whatever. Um, it, you can follow along. And you should get Robert and, Eggers to come in and do an episode. 
Well, you know, it's, it's it feels a little bit like that, actually. Yeah. I think you would enjoy it if you yeah. haven't checked it out. Yeah, maybe um, I because there's, I think it's it's stylistically uh, well done. It's, um, and uh, the the core relationships I think work. So as soon as you got the king, who's a great actor, you got Matt Smith, who's a great actor, really bringing it, and you got Millie Alcock really bringing it. So it's a it's a it's a really good. Uh, dramatic three <laughs> tri- triad there nice. that I think just really it, it works. It works for me. Um, it, it, again, it, it, it leans on the world building aspects of it, but I think that's a strength and not a weakness. So they saved the game of Thrones franchise. I it think was- so. Like again, like I said, it was like it was like returning to a toxic relationship. But the but like the the old girlfriend, she she got rid of her bad habits. She she's in AA. She she's I'm changed, baby. She's got I'll five five years again. so sober. I'll never rush through a finale again. Yes. So I, I'm I'm you know I'm hopeful. It seems like there it's in the right direction. Only two episodes in so far, but I'm That's great. I'm, I'm enjoying it. 